Hi there. Today I'm going to demonstrate how I would make a wind event for a 3D game level using only white noise as an audio source. This tutorial is inspired by some of FMOD 2's new features, most particularly the LFO which they've added. First of all I want to create a two-dimensional event. Although wind can be localised to certain places, that's normally when wind is interacting with an object, vibrating something, and what we're really looking for here is the sort of two-dimensional or omnipresent aspect of wind. We can add sweeteners at a later stage. So I'm going to import my white noise asset. This is the only audio asset I'm going to use for this event. White noise is equal amplitude per frequency, so it has all the frequencies of human hearing within it. You can see by the minus 20 dB, this is very likely a calibrating sample. If you don't have a white noise calibrating sample, you can easily record white noise in your DAW using a test oscillator or signal generator. To get started, I need to make sure that this noise sample is seamless. We're going to be having this on a loop running all the time. And so if it's not seamless, that's going to be distracting very quickly. You can hear there that there is a bit of a fade in or fade out at the beginning and or end of the sample. So I'm just going to cut the end off. Cut the beginning off as well and use this relatively new feature in FMOD, replace audio with trimmed copy. That saves us having to go into an audio editor or DAW and let's see how seamless this new version is. There we go. I like to work in async as it allows me to limit uh, the size or duration of our timeline ruler. And we're going to put a loop around this. And before I take this any further, a couple of things that are going to help us along the route. First of all, this is a very quiet sample. I'm just going to boost it at the source here. Second of all, I know that I'm going to be layering different versions of this sample up on different tracks. And so there is a risk of us finding phase issues between them. I'm going to fix this by randomizing the start offset time by 100%. If I put the start offset at 50%, then it will randomize plus minus 50%, which we can see in async mode. So you can see the playhead there jumping around. Now to turn this into a more realistic wind sounding event, I need to filter the high frequencies of this white noise sample. I'm going to use FMOD's multiband EQ, by far the most flexible EQ and filter set that we have. Working with a low pass filter and low Q values. You can hear there that everything above 1K is rather noisy or harsh to our ears. Uh, and in the kind of 100 hertz to 900 hertz region, we have a really nice sort of natural area of wind-like noise. I use a low Q value. I think uh, it just is more natural sounding overall. And of course, the most obvious characteristic of wind in nature is that it's never stable. So it's always changing. It's always changing in velocity, which translates to us in the audio spectrum as a mixture of amplitude and pitch or frequency. So I want to modulate the frequency of my filter here, and I'm going to do so with FMOD's new LFO feature. The LFO allows us to change this frequency in this instance uh, according to a waveform of a certain rate and, of course, a certain depth. And I like to play with these settings in a normal sine curve before I go and edit the shape of our waveform. If we go and have a look at the shapes on offer, you'll see the usual periodic waveforms are available, plus noise stepped, which is a bit like sample and hold, and noise ramped. Now a noise signal means that the waveform is random, and the ramped part means that we have nice linear movements between each random node in the waveform. So now it sounds like this. So that's the very basis of my wind sound made with noise. 
At the same time as changes in perceived pitch, there would also be changes in perceived loudness. So that I'm going to modulate with a similar LFO on the track volume. Again, get the settings right in periodic waveforms before we move to random waveforms. To add complexity, randomness, and sonic interest, I want to pick up on one of the more characteristic or interesting parts of The Sound of Wind. So I'm going to create a new track. I'm going to copy and paste this container onto the new track. And this time we're going to look at the sort of more howling wind that you might get in an open space. Uh, so I'm imagining here that we're standing on top of a hill or on top of a building or something like that. And to achieve howling wind, I'm going to put the same old multiband EQ, but I'm going to use a different type of filter. A bandpass filter at high Q values is going to create that sort of howling or resonant wind sound. Once again, I need to modulate the frequency of this filter. Let's turn that to our ramped noise waveform. And we also need to control the loudness of this signal. Let's see how the two sound together. So that's not bad at all. In order to make this a little bit more interesting, you might notice that because we're using a mono wind sample, FMOD has defaulted to a mono output on this event. Now, obviously when you experience wind in nature, you have two ears and you're experiencing the difference in wind between your left and right ear. So what we can do is change the output of our howling track to stereo, and we could modulate the pan pot here. And we start to get a little bit of movement there, not too much depth, because we don't want to give the impression that the wind is literally flying left to right. It's just to give some movement between the speakers. So to finish off this short beginner tutorial, I think it can really help uh, to put another EQ on the master channel because we have moving filters. So just limit, once again, the high frequency noise content Not much useful there above eight or nine kilohertz. And something I often find to be the case in FMOD, if I come and put a distortion plugin before the filter in this instance, uh, low level distortion, but I find this can really gel together some different uh, sources or the different filters working independently. I'm making sure to put my distortion before the multiband EQ so that it catches the harmonics the distortion might create. And because noise has equal amplitude down to 20 hertz, we don't feel 20 hertz in wind. So I'm going to also put a high pass filter, this time a more steep one, just really as a protection for our speakers or our ears.
and this will help when we start to add low frequency elements to our wind later on. So we'll come back in the second part of this tutorial and see how much further we can take our wind asset.